Thousands of years before the Targaryen conquest of Westeros, ancient humans settled along the River Rhoyne, creating the independent city-states of Arnoy, Croyane, Goyandro, Nysar, Sarmel, and Sarhoy. Described as olive-skinned with dark hair and eyes, the Rhoynar valued their independence but were also united by culture, language, and religion. Devoted to the worship of the goddess mother Rhoyne, as well as other lesser deities such as the Old Man of the River and Crab King, who fought for dominion of all life below water. With their survival, culture, and religion intertwined with the River Rhoyne, they also trained wizards who practiced water magic, sometimes using them in battle. As the Rhoynar civilization developed, their rulers were known as princes and princesses, becoming much more egalitarian than many neighboring cultures, as homosexuality was tolerated and inheritance rights were held by the eldest child regardless of gender. Given their long history spanning thousands of years, the Rhoynar told many legends about the ancient past, such as that of the hero Garrus the Grey, who drove out the hairy men from the area of Nysar. There was also the story of the Long Night, believed by some in Westeros to have occurred 8,000 years before conquest, when a terrible darkness fell upon the world. According to the Rhoynar, the darkness caused the waters of the River Rhoyne to freeze, until a hero emerged to unite the children of the Goddess Mother to sing a secret song which brought back the day. As the neighboring Andal people migrated, they began to trade and interact more frequently with the Rhoynar, establishing relatively peaceful relations and learning ironworking from their smiths. Yet even as the Rhoynar prospered, growing their strength and influence in the west, war and subjugation threatened them from the east, as the Valyrian freehold began expanding nearby, establishing Volantis. The merchants and nobles of this city, who governed with a great deal of autonomy, were eager to take advantage of trade with the Rhoynar, and so Valyrian settlers took no immediate hostile actions against them, instead moving further north and west to conquer the Andals and establish the cities of Lorath, Norvos, Kohor, Pentos, Myr, Lys, and Tyrosh. However, as time went on, conflict inevitably erupted between the Rhoynar and the ever-expanding Freehold, with the city-states proving victorious in many of their early confrontations. Yet as the threat continued and grew more dire, they united under Prince Garen the Great, who raised an army of 250,000 warriors to be accompanied by powerful water wizards. However, for all their skill and courage, it was not enough to withstand an onslaught of Dragonfire, seeing their final defeat in the Second Spice War around 700 years before conquest. With the army smashed and Prince Garen the Great captured, the remaining Rhoynar were left defenseless, and so their last surviving leader, Princess Nymeria of Nysar, led them into exile, boarding the population of mostly women, children, and the elderly onto 10,000 ships to sail the Summer Sea in search of a new homeland. Yet many of their ships were not designed for long sea voyages, and were destroyed or else scattered their people across nearby islands and coastal areas. Of those ships that continued on, they initially made their way to the Basilisk Isles, where they were attacked and robbed by Corsairs, who then offered to allow them to live on the Isle of Toads in exchange for yearly tributes. However, Nymeria declined, and instead went to Sothorios, settling her people in the ruins of Zamatar and Yin, as well as establishing colonies on Basilisk Point. Yet while these lands were rich in resources, the Rhoynar struggled to survive, losing a number of their settlements to disease and raiding. When a ship sailing to Yin discovered that the entire population had vanished overnight, Nymeria and her people boarded their ships and left Sothorios, journeying west and staying for a time on the island of Nath, where the native population welcomed them. However, a deadly disease forced them to move on yet again, this time settling on the island of Abulu, later named the Isle of Women. And while the Summer Islanders left them in peace, they did not allow them any larger territories for fear of upsetting the Dragon Lords of Valyria. And so the small island did not have enough land to feed their population, leading many to abandon Nymeria and follow a priestess named Druselka back to Essos, who claimed the goddess mother Rhoyne was calling them to return to their homeland, where they were instead captured and enslaved by the Valyrians upon arrival. Nymeria, meanwhile, realized they would not survive in the Summer Isles, and so once again took to the sea, with some of her people remaining behind to make the island their permanent home, while most followed Nymeria to Dorne, landing near the mouth of the River Greenblood. Princess Nymeria then met Lord Mors Martell of Sandship, a lesser ruler of the Dornish territory, and allied together, combining their forces to conquer the area. 
After Nymeria's marriage to Mors, she declared him Prince of Dorne, adopting the titles of the ancient Rhoynar, and as the two cultures mixed together, many other customs and traditions were passed along, including a more equal view of the sexes, with women given the same legal rights as men. Nymeria then burned the ships that carried them to these shores, declaring that their sea journey was over and they would not be returning to Essos. For nine years, they battled for control of Dorne, with Mors Martell killed by King Yorick in the Third Battle of the Boneway. However, Nymeria did not relent, continuing the war until eventually gaining victory after two more years of fighting, famously sending six Dornish kings to the Night's Watch, including Yorick Ironwood, Vorian Dane, Garrison Fowler, Lucifer Dryland, Benedict Blackmont, and Albin Man Woody. With the city of Sunspear made the capital of Dorne, Princess Nymeria remained in power for 27 years, naming her daughter by Mors Martell as heir to ensure that House Martell would rule the realm. However, not all the Rhoynar were so eager to become Dornish, and so some withdrew to the River Greenblood, living on rafts and preserving their ancient culture in the hopes that one day they might return to the River Rhoyne and rebuild their lost cities. Do your shopping on Amazon? Then why not check out the Civilization X store page linked in the description box below, where you can browse through recommended fantasy and science fiction books, audiobooks, movies, TV shows, and more. Or else you can always use the Canadian, American, and UK Amazon links, where you support the channel with every purchase at no extra cost to you. So if you do your shopping on Amazon anyway, why not use the link below and help support Civilization X? A special thanks to all those who contribute to Civilization X, like Ryanon, Isle Shadowcat, Arhael the Silent Blade, Wolf the Quarrelsome, and Fen the Sundowner. If you'd like to help Civilization X, click on the Patreon link, and please be sure to like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and click on the links to see more.